Good morning, friends, and welcome to Friday, September 11th. Thanks to James Montney for getting us started. are from the Upper Room Disciplines by Virginia LaRouche. And our scripture this morning is from Romans 14, 1 to 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on events or servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced of their own minds, and those who observe that day, observe it in the honor of the Lord. Also those who eat in, eat in honor of the Lord, for since they are given thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. So why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The author enters this text as a vegetarian. Her spouse, whom she typically adores and highly respects, is an omnivore, an eater of all foods. For almost 30 years, they practiced living, hosting, cooking, praying, and raising children together. They've had to practice Paul's challenge of non-judgmental welcome to each other around their diets, as well as their differences in gender, race, and culture. At the time of this writing, the United Methodist Church is struggling mightily in excruciating ways about how or if to welcome sisters and brothers of varied sexual orientations into different parts of the life of the church. Judgment abounds amid the disagreement. And in the ruckus and the heartbreak, it's hard to hear Paul's and Jesus' calls and prayers for radical welcome of one another. Mutual up building and righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, and unity. So she returns to the lessons that she's still learning in, our, in their small family. Outrage and shock have at times flashed through her at various contrasting ways her spouse and they and herself maneuver and view life with their different races and genders and histories and more. More often, she's been irritated by tiny misunderstandings and perceived minute acts of disrespect. That's when an observant friend who lost her cherished spouse quick, quietly reminded her, some things are more important than being right. Really? Perhaps her point is, 
as Paul's as well. So she's turning gratefully to welcome her beloved in the life that they shared. She's grateful that she, uh, their imperfect unity in some ways repairs the story that they will pass on to their children and offers welcome in a world marked by acts of terror and destruction and separation. Let us pray. O oh, unifying God, may we practice small, unconditional welcomes until we gather as one united community, vegetarian and omnivores alike, around your feast table. Amen. Our closing hymn is Many Gifts, One Spirit, for, by, by verse 2. Praise, praise, praise. Amen. <laughs>